Ripley leaned forward tensely. If the computer chose not to reveal further information, she knew of no additional codes that could pry answers free. There was also the possibility that the computer truly had no explanation for the science officer's bizarre actions. It did, though. Special Order 937 Science Personnel Eyes Only. Restricted information. Well, she managed this long. She could work around those restrictions. She was starting to when a hand slammed down next to her, sinking up to the elbow in the computer's terminal. Spinning in the chair, her heart missing a beat, she saw not the creature, but a form and face now becoming equally alien to her. Ash smiled slightly. There was no humor in that upturning of lips. Command seems a bit too much for you to handle, but then proper leadership is always difficult under these circumstances. This was an excerpt from the alien novelization written by Alan Dean Foster. In this video, we're going to explore theories, vintage theories, about Special Order 937. I say vintage because it was from a time before the internet, sequels, or anything that might have retconned the cinematic universe. Now, when I have a video about Alien, I'm trying to relive, re-experience what it was like leaving the cinema after watching the film in 1979. We didn't have the luxury of streaming, YouTube channels, or anything on the interweb. Before we begin, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like it. What was Special Order 937? Bring back life form. Priority 1. All other priorities rescinded. The company sent Ash to make sure a specimen would be brought back. The fate of the Nostromo crew was unimportant. When was the decision made? How much did the company know and when comes with few clues in the film. The first comes when Captain Dallas tells Ripley, I went out five times with another science officer. They replaced him two days before we left Thetis with Ash. At first glance, it's a hint of mistrust between Ash and the rest of the crew, seeding the premise of paranoia. I don't trust him. I don't trust anybody. Ash is the outsider and may not be as sympathetic to the crew's personal agendas. In hindsight, it was no coincidence, and the company wanted someone who they trusted to get Special Order 937 done. Next is Mother's terse explanation, which not only included the science department's goal of bringing back a specimen, but to reroute the Nostromo to get it. To the casual observer watching it once, the Nostromo's exploration of LV-426 could have been described as the rerouting. However, I believe the rerouting was planned on the ship's return home, making sure the Nostromo was within range of the alien beacon. This tripped Mother's protocol to wake the crew out of hypersleep and begin exploration at risk of breaching contract and losing all shares. One thing about a conspiracy, there's a lot of pieces that come together. Sometimes that's too much to digest on a single viewing. It's like watching that movie about hearing so much exposition, ideas, and managed coincidences. It's just easier to believe it was the lone gunman. Without additional details from the novelization based on earlier drafts of the script, all I remembered about Special Order 937 was Ash's protection of the Xenomorph. What was presented to us in the opening moments as an unfortunate chance picking up the alien beacon turned out as a lie to not only the crew but the audience. It was a conspiracy. In the film, made known to us in a single short clip that could easily be overlooked or forgotten. Our last clue comes when Ash is reactivated after having his head knocked off. Ripley explains why Ash was protecting the alien off camera. All I can think of is they must have wanted the alien for the weapons division. Maybe it was felt that a little more information was needed to be said, rather than shown once for five seconds over a computer terminal. Still considered rare in 1979, by the way. For what should be considered in the in-film universe as speculation was in fact exposition to the audience. 
Putting the three clues seen or heard in the film together, the company had prior knowledge of the beacon, replaced the assigned science officer with Ash two days before the mission, rerouted the return path home in order to have the crew investigate, and one way or another, bring back a specimen at all costs. After knowing this, there are still open questions. Did the company know about the xenomorph? My theory, if all we had to work with was the film, we're talking about a universe where alien life hasn't been discovered. I've discussed this in prior videos about how alien comes across as grounded. It does not make it known that alien life, intelligent or not, was commonplace. In my mind, it made sense that the company would be all excited in tripping over an opportunity like this and wanted to bring a specimen back to Earth. However, the novelization goes into much greater detail. In the novel, Ash says, I was directed to reroute the Nostromo, or make sure its crew rerouted it from its assigned course, so that it would pick up the signal, Program Mother, to bring you out of hypersleep, and program her memory to feed you the story about the emergency call. Company specialists already knew that the transmission was a warning, and not a distress signal. At the source of the signal, we were to investigate a life form, almost certainly hostile according to what the company experts distilled from the transmission, and bring it back for observation and company evaluation of any potential commercial applications, using discretion of course. Knowing what was written in the novelization, the film was true to the narrative without the exposition with an abbreviated speech from a debilitated Ash. But the novelization, as well as the director's cut, have elements that directly contradict the cinematic canon. Did the warning signal die out between Alien and its sequel? Did the company simply give up on their goals to pursue a great commercial opportunity? The fanboy in me discounts these valid questions. Perhaps the beacon did go silent when Kane lowered into the cargo bay of eggs. Maybe the company knew of the beacon, but never where it originated from. Only an expedition close to the sector of space could know for sure. Before I go, I leave behind with you two interesting theories, alternative theories, about how the company orchestrates Special Order 937. The first there is always Special Order 937. It is a policy that exists within the science department in perpetuity. Whenever there is an opportunity to appropriate and take advantage of alien life or technology, it is the duty of the company representative to acquire a specimen for commercial gain. Laws, regulations, and ethics are no excuses when there is so much wealth to be made. Secondly, there is always an android as part of the crew. Has been, and always will be. Just that some are better at their duties than others. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, A good company promises big things before sending you on a business trip. A better company makes sure you come back. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.